show, the Drew and Fuse show. They clean up nicely. It's the Drew and Fuse show. The Drew and Fuse show. The Drew and Fuse show. Yeah, they clean up nicely. punks in the building we're back with another episode drew pierce here from long beach california and i am fusamania from cincinnati ohio checking in how have you been drew it's been a long few days since we've talked last <laughs> a long yesterday um i'm doing great man we're going into the weekend headed to florida then headed to boston and i believe you mean flo rida yeah, flow right right round into the Bostonians, um, and then home. So, yeah, a nice little whirlwind. Got way too many gigs for December. Why Dude, do you do it? I I ask myself the same thing, and then I do it again, and then next year I'm like, oh, I'm gonna keep it keep it light. And I'm looking at my January, and I'm like, every single weekend is to the the almighty dollar is the important thing and it, it keeps you busy you know i wanted to talk about something speaking about dollars and how you can save dollars and that's if you use the promo code uh drew and fuse show at directmusicservice.com it'll save you 30 percent off your first month of activation you can find that information again in the description of the video or in the podcast you'll be able to find that but if you use promo code drew and fuse show it'll get you 30 percent off your first month of activation at directmusicservice.com also we got that briggs beard oil if you're rocking a beard if you're not rocking a beard you can lather your face up with some of this briggs beard oil it's uh it's if you use the promo code DAFS, D A F S, it's going to get you 20% off any uh, anything that you order over at Briggs Beard Company. Again, nitroglycerin not included with this. You won't combust if you put this on your body. It's, it's all good. <laughs> it's sustain- it's the all natural. Is sustainable. It's all natural. Yeah, that's right. Also, shout out to our friends over at Club Cannon because uh, we love Club Cannon. We love turning our parties up to 11. So if you're in need for a club cannon, go over there, check them out, tell them Drew and Fuse sent you. Also, what's that? What's that? Uh, what's that drink we're sponsored by? Do you know? Uh, Liquid Death. It's Starbucks. It's Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to opt out of our Liquid Death contract that we were sponsored by, and we uh, yep. we went to Starbucks. They are sponsoring the podcast now, so shout out to all of our haters that said we couldn't do it. It's now <clears> possible. <throat> Pumpkin spice, pumpkin spice, pumpkin spice lattes all month. If you 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 fake it until you make it, I believe is the line. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the uh, Yolo the Yolo call line calls from last week's episode. We had uh, Lorgan, aka Low Stacks, call in. We had Hi Kevin, call in. So shout out to both of those guys for calling in. Again, you could hit that line. That number is five six two two four six YOLO. Five six two two four six YOLO, and you can leave us a drunk dial. You can leave us a thought. You can leave us a question. Whatever your heart desires, uh, just reach out to us. We appreciate it. We got a great guest for you today, and without uh, beating around the bush too much, we're uh, gonna just jump right into it. Our guest today has almost 20 years of experience in the DJ game. She's sponsored by a lot of big industry names like EV and Max Booth. She's also a YouTuber with almost 12,000 subscribers and is constantly doing gig logs over there and reviewing gear. She's open for some legends in the music industry like Gloria Gaynor and George Clinton, Parliament, Funkadelic. So with that being said, please help us welcome DJ Rachel. Hey, guys. Hey. hey, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely pumped to be here. Um, you know, can we open it before? I honestly don't feel that I'm cool enough to be here, but, you know, thank you so much for having me. It's 
no I'm, I'm pumped. thanks we're we're stoked um you know i'm a giant fan i watch your youtube all your videos um you do really good reviews and they're very thorough you know i i watched a bunch of the the ev ones for that new speaker that came out i want to say yours was the, it was the verse right the battery one and mm -hmm. yours was the thorough it was just so detailed and it had you know really what i want in a review so you know, kudos to you. So usually when we get started, we we jump into some rapid fire here. We got a few questions. We're going to play a, a segment video. Let's see. Somewhere in here. Okay, here it is. can't wait to see what celebrity I get. Is it going to be MJ? <laughs> is it going to be Arnold? Like, I'm, I'm waiting here to see what this is. All right, we're going to play go. it, and then we'll get started into some rapid fire. Hey, this is the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Drew and Fuse... Let's talk questions. In fact, let's do some rapid fire. Now, I know these rapid fires aren't always so rapid fire, and that is okay by me. I got nothing but time. Now, let's look at the man in the mirror and get started. <laughs> All right, there it is, the king of pop. Dude, this is like the whole reason why I like I'm here. I just wanted to be these like these are so <laughs> amazing. Oh, well, we have a brand oh, new one. You're going to be the first. Yeah, you're yeah. Gonna you're going to be the gonna first be for the new one. Yeah, at the at the very Beautiful. end. I love it. Um, so, one of the things that we like to ask is if we were to come visit you, where would you take us to eat that you could only get where you are in your area, Connecticut? Where wh like uh what is something local to you that you can only get there that you would take us? Oh my god. Okay. Well, I mean, the obvious answer is as I'm taking you for pizza. Like there's no doubt about that. And it would I have to be. Uh, this. <laughs> yeah, he was mentioning the pizza thing. But you're in that. Are you in the pizza area that like the bar stool? The, the, the. Yeah, the I'm like, okay, I'm okay. like a like a 30 minute drive from it. Like it's it's not it's not a big deal. So that's in uh, New Haven, Connecticut at on a Worcester Street. And it's almost like yeah. a, a little a little Italy. And it's just iconic pizzeria after pizzeria. Like you can do your own pizza tour just on this one small block of New Haven. And it's it's heaven. I, There's I've nowhere been in the there. country. So, okay. So, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just one yep. little small street with all these little tiny hole in the wall pizzerias. And it's just fire. It's fire. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. It just, in fact, I think we got two or three pizzas and we brought them all to one spot. We just like uh, bought pies and brought them all over and we're sampling all the different ones. Well, that's typically what I do because to get in a place to sit, it's like an hour wait. But to go, they'll they'll pop it out in like 10 minutes. So you send a group of friends like you go to Sally's, you go to uh, Frank Pepe's, you go to Modern, each bring a pizza. Then we just lay them out like on the car and we just eat in, in the street <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> This is like uh, all right. lightning stuff. Like I could see him doing in like a, a 1950s movie over like <laughs> some greasers eating some pizza in the parking lot. <laughs> but that's so, awesome. That's like fun. I, I'm I love Dave's uh, pizza videos. I watch just about every one of them because I don't know why. I, they they just crack me up. And so, what are you ordering? What's on your pie? To the best of those three spots you just mentioned. Oh man. Okay. Um, so if it's a first time I go to a place, I'm always ordering a cheese or if they only offer a tomato pie, cause that's kind of like the traditional of that. That's what I'm judging you on. I don't want any toppings. I don't want fair or fanciness. If you can't make a good cheese pizza, I don't even want to know about the rest. You know what I mean? So like, that's yeah. what you're getting judged on. Um, my favorite spot on that block is probably going to be Zanelli's and it's all the way at the end. And there's these really small Neapolitan pies and they're just like great basics, like really fresh basil, very simple. Um, and then they actually have a Nutella pie with strawberries and powdered sugar. It's like a dessert pizza. It's reckless. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> um, and I'm probably going to get a lot of like hate mail for this, but my least favorite on that entire street is gonna be Frank Pepe's, and I know that's like wow. the most iconic spot in Connecticut. Um, it's not. I like modern. I like a Bates better. Like Sally's is not my first pick. It's good, but not my favorite. All right, and so that's the first thing you're going cheese pie. But after you've been to a place uh, multiple times, now are you still sticking with the cheese or the tomato, or what? What are you going with after that? All right, so then it gets a little more specified. I will go to places for a specific type 
of pie. Like I got a specific place that I love their barbecue chicken pizza. I got another place that I like their grandma's pie. So like, like I'm, I'm floating around and I'm going for the best of what they particularly, particularly make. So. Makes sense. So another question we have for you and we like hearing these from everybody is we want to hear funny or crazy DJ stories. It could be a night gone bad. It could be a night gone amazing. You can be multiple stories, but we want to hear uh, some some memorable stories, a celebrity sighting, anything you can think of. <laughs> oh, man. Um, OK, I. Two right now are, are coming to mind. One's really short, so I'll, I'll tell it another one. Um, so people might not know this, but um, I've been a Connecticut State EMT for about 20 years, almost as long as I've been DJing. And I always have a jump bag in my car, you know, general first aid stuff, you know, CPR mask. I even have an AED in the back of my car. Like, I got it all. So anyway, I'm doing a uh, holiday Christmas party. And this was a, a pretty wild one. Like, you could tell, like, HR wasn't in the room. It was open bar or they were having a good ass time <laughs> Christmas yeah. parties where like wanted to be there. Um, there were definitely hitting shots. And like I said, got to a point in the night where, you know, our dancing started and things got kind of crazy. So chair dancing, wait, wait, dancing what's the chair. chair dancing? Like, like standing on a chair, like, like kind of taking naps and doing, you know, the whole list or whatever. Oh, um, gotcha. And I believe what was I playing? I feel like it was delicious. Like she was wild delicious so anyway she's standing on top of this chair she slips off and bashes her face on the back of the chair um i'm pretty sure she broke her nose like obviously you know it's it's like the crazy so for those of you who don't know they bleed a lot because they're vascular so like a nosebleed will make it look like you're dying even though you know you're probably all right but hands and faces bleed a lot so there is blood everywhere like, people are starting to gag. A couple people, like, were ready to pass out. Like, it ruined the party. I obviously go out to my car. I get some of my general first aid stuff. Like, the venue itself really wasn't tremendously helpful. Um, you know, that most venues would have at least a, a pretty substantial first aid kit, like, in their kitchen or something. Like, nobody came out to do anything. So, I, like, turned the music off, ran out to the car, and I'm, like, cleaning this lady up. She's, like, really upset. And it, it was a nightmare. Like it literally ruined the entire party. So let's hear that second story you were telling us about. Okay. Um, less dramatic, but funny nonetheless. So I was DJing at a uh, nightclub in Hartford called the Russian lady. And you kind of have to walk to their parking lot. So I'm dragging my 90 pound, 90 pound flight case down, you know, backpack, all that. I go down the stairs. It like load in like sucks. So I finally get to my car and I'm trying to schlub stuff into my vehicle. And I know to be pulling on like the door handle of the, like the front of the car and looking and here, I don't know if I'm going to get hard jack, you know, late at night, I got a lot of expensive stuff in my hands. You know, they just paid you in cash. And uh, now I see someone trying to like get into my car. So I hurry, like throw the stuff in my car, you know, cause like protect the laptop bat all cost. I'm ready to cut cut a you know, you know, if, if they're coming at me with my laptop and home drive. So anyway, um, so I run around, you know, to the to my driver's side, you know, un unlock that door and in and I, the person still get in my car. So I crack the window. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? And they're like, Yo, man, are you our Uber? So this person's like trying to break into my car, like shit faced hammered, thinking I'm their Uber. -er. Like while I'm trying trying to load in all this equipment they're just like pulling on my door handle and i'm like uh no dude not me like this this is not this is not your uber you need you need to step away but here I'm, thinking, I'm like getting mugged i'm all stressed out i'm really upset it was it was ridiculous I had a drunk person trying to get in my car thinking <laughs> at the end of the night um, trying to carjack you at the same time man it was that's terrible that's the first time i've heard somebody having that happen to him where somebody's just like been at a parking lot or a parking lot at the end of the night and some drunk person's like trying to get in their car like eh, this is the uber and you're like no this isn't the uber bro get get out of here <laughs> Thank God you're okay. I, I can only imagine like that would be pretty scary. I, even me, I, I'm like, you know, beeline to the van, try and like put my head down and just cut right through everybody and get in the car and j drive off. 
One of the uh, final questions we want to ask is is something we ask everybody, and it, it 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 tends to be a stumper. What is your favorite one word non curse word uh, insult? I'm usually well, cursing. What would you so. have called that person without <laughs> cussing them out? Yeah. What would you have called that that Uber kid that was trying to get in without cussing them out? Probably not. It doesn't apply to this guy, but because I deal with a lot of like online comments and, and trolls and stuff, so I, I got to kind of like a couple, a couple of them. Um, I like really petulant turd is a, is a go to now. Um, <laughs> you need to stop right. being a we petulant totally turd. That. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely haven't had that one and or that, uh... turd. So both just turd and plain turd <laughs> is fine too. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I call really boring people potatoes. Like you're just acting like a potato. Or like you like that. Was that my Alexa? Ah! Who's Alexa? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa is going on. I love it. <laughs> What's happening? Do you know, was that mine? <laughs> I just, Not mine. I just turned on Alexa. Oh my oh, God. So apparently good. Apparently, whatever he's, I just did, just, talking about he, potatoes, my, my, you know, just went off. <laughs> yeah. We had, we had so, tomato, yeah, but we didn't turd. have a potato. Yeah. Potato. You're just like uninteresting. You're dull. You're lazy, is potato. I don't know. <laughs> or turds. I, I like turd. Turd, turd. turd is a staple. All right. That's going to wrap up some of our rapid fire questions. So I, do, I do listen to your, your podcast and your, your show here. So I know um, we don't have to do like the whole 60 second rant, but I at least want to bring up something that does nope, drive me. No, nope, we're doing me it. Not we're in the video. No, right we're now. doing it. We're doing it. Oh, oh, or we're going to play yeah. the video. No, you can speak on it. Uh hey, Drew and Fuse. Peter Griffin calling in. I want to hear what really grinds DJ's gears. You know, besides from bad bunny requests from a phone or DJ stealing custom mashups of YMCA and Macarena and using it on their own TikToks. Hey, this week's guest, what grinds your gears? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm excited because we don't usually get these hot takes. So here we got a 60 second rant and a hot take. Let's hear it. Okay, one of the things that drives me absolutely insane is that people people will comment post whether it's on Instagram, on YouTube, you know, Facebook or whatever, before even watching content. It's like I just spent 20. Two hours making this video. Now you want to talk shit in the comment section or something that is just so inaccurate. Watch the video, or they're so motivated to try to disprove me, or like the petulant turd attitude is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. Like I made the content, at least have the respect to watch it before commenting. Um, one of the biggest examples, I know I'm going to be over 60 seconds, but. Keep Go going, give, it to him. give it to him. Give it to him. I did an entire video on Beat Source, right? I still think there's a lot of ambiguity and misunderstanding around streaming services, and there's still a lot of pushback about it. So I think Beat Source is a phenomenal service. Um, and I went out of my way so that people could understand that this can be used with confidence in places with sketchy internet. Now, as you've seen throughout this show, I have pretty sketchy internet. So if I'm willing to vouch for it, I'm telling you, you no, know, <laughs> it's it's legit. So before yeah. people even watch the video, it was just all these gatekeepers and these like grumpy, you know, anti-tech, I'll never stream and blah, 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 and going and on. And, you know, what if you have no internet? It's like, well, if you just watch the video you would understand that you have a thousand song locker, you know, you can deal right. with. Or if you watch the video, I literally show you what happens when I disconnected my internet in the middle of a live mix I was doing to show you nothing bad and scary happens. So I was really trying to go out of my way to like strip away these misconceptions about it because I think we as an industry need to move forward. You can't do this and not accept new tech. Now I'm not saying you have to abandon all, you know, everything that's like familiar and comfortable to you but at least have an open mind to have a discussion or watch you know some content on it and really understand what you're talking about you know so that's like a five minute rant but 
that's a Rachel tell them why you're mad because I make content. I like people it. Don't watch it, and then they want to comment, and it's just like no, the, nothing about what you said is correct or accurate or anything. I like okay, it. Not. I like it. I got a hot take on Beat Source though, and I this is not because we're from DMS. This is just a a hot take to 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 give back to what you were saying, and since you brought it up, uh, I think. One, people do need to listen to a full video like what you're explaining because it is very annoying. You're like, yo, dude, the answer is in the video. Like, yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying right there. I put it right there. But one thing I want to say is streaming is is cool and I think it's great. But I think one of the things that is interesting with the streaming is that in some instances of where the platforms are at right now, all DJs will just sound like other DJs. I think part of the beauty in in DJing is the customness of your music library and stuff. And my, my one thing that I will say about it is like, it would be great. I think it would be a great so or service for people that, you know, are maybe just getting into DJing or maybe you're, you, you are DJing a lot of private events and you need a song or whatever. I, I'm not, this isn't, me knocking beat source but what, what i'm more saying is like i think the the beauty in music is the customization and that it's going to be really hard to convince people to to go on that platform when like for example if you go watch a diplo play diplo is playing like a different version of the song every night and it's going to be hard to keep up with that on a streaming service so i think knowing when you're using a streaming service and that kind of thing is important too you know and just understanding what kind of dj you are and what your use is for the software or anything you're actually using for that matter absolutely so i personally belong to at least six different pools you know i like that variety and i like knowing that i can pull from different editors different vibes different styles different creators um so my my pools are like that's what makes me allow to be my best self and that's why can i was joking when i was like i don't even feel you know worthy enough to be here because there's so many people that weekend after weekend you guys allow me to crush my events and honestly, make me sound better than I am because, you know, I'm not a producer. I don't really have any interest in it. I don't have any time to do it. So I know I could go to these pools and pull tremendous edits that are going to crush my events every single weekend. And, you know, you folks with that extra, um, you know, talent of producing allow people like me, you know, to, to do that. So I pools are my my everything. I, I couldn't do totally. it without them. We, we, we always preach too. even like, you know, we both work for DMS, but we always preach. One of the things we always say is you should not keep one pool. If you're a professional DJ, you need to have access to different, different pools for different. Everybody is good at something different. And there are a lot of great content on every different pool. And they have exclusive editors that we don't have over at DMS. And we talk all the time. And we've had some of those guys on here. We had DeVille on a couple weeks ago. We had even Steve on a couple weeks or a few months ago. And those are two editors that we love that aren't on, you know, aren't on DMS. And we support them. And we, we both, Drew and I both agree so much that you need to have multiple multiple pools so you keeping six i think shows just yeah. how serious and professional you are about you know the music and which i always say the music is the most important part you know it, at the end of the day it really is and nothing burns me up more than a dj that is so cheap they won't even pay for one pool or something like that i'm like what are you even doing here like what are you doing <laughs> Or just ripping YouTube audio and, you know, hoping that it sounds okay and having the stuff in the middle. I I will agree with you on BeatSource. I, I signed up for BeatSource. I like BeatSource. And I think there's a place for streaming coming up here in the future. And I'm not worried about tech. I'm I am a forward thinker on tech. I'm definitely and we want to talk to you about tech here in just in a little bit, but I'm yeah. I'm such a big proponent of just trying. I I tried out Beat Source. I did a silent disco. They had, uh, I basically was in charge of three different formats. So I was DJing live one. And then the, the client just wanted other stuff. It didn't matter. We had like a kid's channel. So it had just a, a, a playlist so that kids can go be kids and, you know, <laughs> have their kids songs. <laughs> and then we had, and then I had another one where I actually tried out beat source. I pulled a, a Nick Spinelli playlist and it was just going and it was it was it was awesome it was 
I was using the DJ app and it was it was mixing it. I could just hit next and it was mixing it. And it was cool to have those options, you know. So I there is a place for it. And I think as it grows, it'll be good. But like you and Few said, is having those custom edits is you know, just about everything that I play is it's all about that custom edit. So and I moving think- in a in a right direction and it's it's gonna be ever evolving. And the reason why I you know I think having any streaming service is important, at least for an open format G- DJ, especially in the private event sector, because you have people from four years old to 85 years old coming up and asking you, you know, I don't want to say you don't have that in the club, but you don't have that in in the club. So as an open format private event DJ, you need to have access to a lot more stuff than you know, a nightlife um, DJ would. Totally. So that being said, um, that's why streaming, I think, is is awesome um, as, as, a, as a catalog yeah. filler. You know, I wouldn't just abandon record pools and go with that. But BeatSource, at least, is now offering DJ-friendly edits with intros and outros and remixes. The reason why they don't have as much available as probably a lot of us would like is because they try to do it kind of legitimately and they try to get the approval for the remixes so that people can get compensated and there's a lot more red tape to go through so to speak um but i think eventually it's gonna be even even better but i like the variety i totally i have literally six pools um i support you know i love scooter star jack um you know, obviously you guys, um, good fellas, like just all of it, Kirkland clan, like you guys yeah. keep me fresh week after week. So that's, totally. and that's, that's a staple. I think you said it best too. Like you're, you're a busy person and you know, the pools and stuff like that are, are here to help people such as yourself who, you know, you are doing this and you're doing that and you're doing this and you know, you, you just want to get the music and you want to use it and you want to, put it in and that's what that's what we're here for and i appreciate that because we appreciate you guys that use the pools and everything and um i i think it's again i think it's awesome that you're using so many different ones one of the things we wanted to kind of talk to you about was you know kind of your start on youtube and how you kind of got started with that and 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 how long you've been doing that so we'll play this segment video Go and fools. How all shook up, you hound dogs. Don't be cruel. There's an hour never. Let's talk social media. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. One of the things we wanted to talk to you a little bit about is your your YouTube. You've got a big presence on YouTube, and I guess this is a multiple part question. Being as you know, what was your thoughts with getting started, and kind of how did that come about? And now that you've had some success with it, what are your plans moving forward? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is kind of going to be a, a multiple part answer, and it's kind of crazy how things come full circle, but. It actually, so I've had a YouTube account since 2009, but I definitely was not a content creator by any stretch of the imagination. I just was on there to consume and and not create. So everything kind of started with um, this one Facebook video where I had bought a uh, Magma Riot XL backpack for my Denon MC6000 MK2. To this day, it's a dope controller. I still use it. Things like eight years old. It's a, it's a freaking tank. <laughs> I love it. Um, I bring it out to my no my no fuss gigs. So anyway, um, when I was shopping for a bag, I was trying to find something with like a lot of space and you know that I could safely tr- uh, put a controller in there and the dimensions and like the pockets and are the zippers any good? You know stuff that you know, DJs want to know and care about when they're shopping for things. And I couldn't find anything on this bag. So I took a chance. Um, I don't know. I think it was like 220 bucks. So, you know, it wasn't like super cheap. And um, after putting all my stuff in it, I was like, hey, this is this is a really dope bag. So I said, why don't I, you know, make a little re- video kind of showing the pockets, the zippers and, you know, what I have stuffed in this thing and just, you know, why I think it's why I'm not returning it, you know, that I like the bag. And I posted it on uh, Facebook and I actually tagged uh, Magma, the, the company in it, um, didn't get any response or acknowledgement, you know, totally that's fine. But um, I actually had uh, IDJ now 
come across the video because I had posted it in the DJ Facebook groups, you know, like DJ Deer Sharing and, you know, a lot of these other popular groups where there's like, you know, 12,000 people in there. So uh, I DJ now reached out and they're like, hey, you know, you just did this review on a bag and we thought you did a really good job. You know, we don't know if this is like what you do or, you know, if you wanted to partner on anything, but, you know, we kind of like your vibe. We like your style. You know, you're really, um, you know, well-spoken, you're thorough, you know, you're, you're down to earth, transparent. So, you know, would you be interested in maybe kind of partnering with us where we can send you, you know, stuff that you're interested in. You could do a review on it, whether you like it, don't like it, whatever. And if you want to keep it, you know, we'll sell it to you at like a 20%, you know, discount. Or if you're not interested in it, you can send it back. No questions asked, no restocking fee. Like, we don't care. Um, you know, tell us what you think. So it all kind of started out with just this backpack video. And then I started doing some content for, you know, IDJ Now. What what yeah. camera are you using at this stage? And because I love the I love the graduation or, you know, you're like, okay, this camera sucks. I need to get this and I need to get this. So where are you at right now with your tech wise? And what are you editing on? Like iMovie or what are you doing? Dude, there has been no graduation and people are going to think I'm insane. And um, I'll, I'll go on. In 2009? Little, 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 so, Wait, for 2009? Um, Come on. No, 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 no. In 2009, I wasn't making They're using that so, iPhone so this... one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I started making videos probably around four or five years ago. So this magma Raya backpack is probably like a five, five years ago, kind of a thing. I am right, still right, right. just using a cell phone and a selfie stick. There is no high tech wow. here, folks. And I edit all of my gig logs, my everse review. Everything is literally done on my cell phone with my finger using InShot. Wow. Which is like I, a $20 I don't know app at the time. I That's never would have guessed that. I think that's awesome to hear because for people that are listening that think, Hey, I might want to, I want to start doing this. How, what's it, how can I get started? Well, you just heard, you just know, start. Well, that's then, awesome. okay. Question then. Cause the people that are listening that should know this, are you doing the front facing camera or do you flip it around and kind of try and frame yourself the best you can? Uh, front facing camera, always that's self amazing. stick front All facing right. camera. And then, Oh, so here's my one upgrade. Cause everybody knows that audio is more important than picture quality. People will tolerate poor picture quality, obviously, by my, uh, you know, webcam that <laughs> I finally got to work here um, versus, you know, the microphone. So I uh, got a Sabine Tech Smart Mic Plus. It's a little clip on Bluetooth mic. And this is yeah. how things, you know, look and sound good. But this was literally the only upgrade that I use. But now I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. And the camera is so incredible and the mic. I'm not going to say I don't use this, but like if I have to record something in the moment, I have no problem just turning on my cell phone and doing what I need to do because the camera and microphone are that good. Yeah, yeah I'm as low tech as low tech can be with that. Everything is recorded and edited right on my cell phone. So zero excuse, I'll people. I'll show you this little thing. It might come in handy for you, but the, for a moment, uh, it's it's a MagSafe thing and you can just stick your, stick oh, your wow, phone on that. it. So it just goes right that. And so then you can pull it off. But anyways, that's the one it. thing I got. I got that off moment. That's that's my one little thing that you might be able to get. Just because you don't need the clamp and you can pull it your phone off quick. So do you have two phones or you're just using your, your primary phone? My primary phone. So tight. Because it's always with me. So, <laughs> yeah. so again, I always have access to make content. It's literally yeah. in my pocket. Yeah. I love it. All right. So it started out with, with the backpack IDJ now kind of a thing. So I said, this is going to be a multiple part question. So then I started creating um, additional content, uh, gig logs and things like that to kind of deal with the uh, internet bullies and trolls and the naysayers and people who didn't think that I actually uh, could DJ or knew what I was doing. Um, just a lot of negativity and just meanness you know so it's kind of one of those you know if you don't think i can do this i'm going to show you i can do this so let's uh pull back the curtain and i'm going to take you on my journey recording setting up gear troubleshooting gear why i chose the gear i did um just to build some you know credibility you know i just got tired of people thinking i couldn't do this when i knew that i could so to combat the petulant turds that we uh <laughs> talked tell about them you know, uh, before. Yeah. So, um, and then it just kept like evolving. Um, then I saw, 
you know, hey, not only does this combat the naysayers, but now clients can say, you know, wow, she really knows, she knows her shit, you know, and kind of watch what I do and say, you know, we we want her and they can see your personality. They can see the gear that you're using. So it's been a tremendous marketing tool. And then uh, now that I kind of have a little bit more visibility, I have a really good algorithm on Facebook. So, um, you know, when I post something now, if someone notices a piece of gear, I'll get 55 inbox messages. Hey, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? What is it? Who makes it? Where can I buy it? What about this? So um, just to cut back on some of the repetitive questions that I get, now I make really thorough you know, gear review videos to kind of give everybody the information they need up front. And then this way, if they need to know more or I didn't elaborate enough on something, then they can reach out to me, you know, directly and say, hey, I didn't really understand this. Or you can tell me a little bit more about that. Um, but it's just really easy for me to now go to my YouTube page, cut and paste the link, send it to them, say, check this out, then get back to me. And I'm going to say 85 percent of the time I've covered, you know, exactly what they wanted to know. Yeah, I want to compliment you so much on that e that EV verse speaker review you did. It was just so thorough. You went into all the details about everything, way more than a lot of the other YouTubers. I, I think I probably watched five different videos on that, and yours was the best. Yours was my favorite. It really um, answered so many questions. And uh, I want to say too, that should really mean a lot coming from Drew because here's why: <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but Drew thrives on youtube he doesn't watch sitcoms or whatever like most people when he kicks back he 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 busts out a cold starbucks because that's our new sponsor and uh he uh sits on his couch and he flicks on the youtube and he just scrolls through and watches everybody's new youtube video i'm telling you i don't know one person that spends more time on youtube than this guy i <laughs> love here our, our youtube premium stats <laughs> which, which premium is the must right you, is there even any other way to live no no absolutely you, not I'm you, so i have a i have a question for you i'm sorry to get sidetracked but this is the show it's it's random um do you use <laughs> youtube music at all no when they said you know watch, watch this video on youtube music never yeah. never well, but it's free, and I feel like, why am I using Spotify <laughs> if is YouTube Music is free and it's actually pretty good? You get so much more from it. But you know, I guess to digress a little bit, is we do send out usually when I'm working with clients, I usually say, okay, um, just send me a Spotify playlist. And 95% of clients use Spotify, and no one uses. Barely anyone uses Apple Music, and definitely no one uses YouTube Music. That's for sure. Exactly right. So I have so. Spotify for customer in integration. You know, just to make the workflow you know easier with that. But premium YouTube must. It's a must. It's a must. Well, you are an innovator. You you created this really amazing, or you didn't create it, but you had the foresight to go to a three D printer and get this custom shelf made for the ev the ev line the 30s and the 50s just because they make that terrible pull that no it's amazing but they make this pull where the the shelves that you can get on amazon don't work on anything else right <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah, it's like uh, this proprietary square pole right <laughs> and it's like the the ones that you could buy on amazon just aren't big enough you know so yeah, I just wanted to ask about that. And, you know, you going to these guys and maybe that's a, a, a future that you need to look into is the 3D printing line, the Rachel 3D printing sub sub side <laughs> on your website. Yeah, so uh, full transparency, you know, with, with this shelf. So there's a, a guy named Todd Hill um, from 3 hd designs i think it's called um he already had 3d printed kind of shelves and products made um however over 2020 uh you know with all that downtime i really tried to, to streamline and and cut back the amount of crap i was bringing with me like my ceremony setup was way more complicated than it needed to be and i was trying to like how the hell can i leave an extra table at home i hate speaker pull I hate scrim. I hate wire management. It's just also time consuming. Um, I was using a whole four channel Roland 707M for ceremonies. Why? Now I use an iPad and my finger and maybe a Hercules Starla mixed cocktail hour or something. But either which way, uh, I was like, I got to 
cut back on the crap I'm bringing. So I came across uh, this guy's 3D printed stuff and he already had like a a basic model made, but it wasn't exactly what I needed. So I reached out to him and said, listen, you know, here's kind of what I'm thinking as a DJ, this is what I need it to do. And that little um, C cup thing on the side that you see, that's like a wire management. Yeah. So you can put your XLR cable in there. You know, I had him add that. Um, I told him that I needed like a, a double shelf so I could have my microphone base uh, right below my eye. And he just, he, he tweaked it for me so that it, it worked for my workflow better. So, of course, I made a post, did a video on it. Everyone was like, oh, my God, that's so cool because there's a lot of Evolve um, fans out there, whether it's the 30M or the 50. You know, it's, it's a very big wedding DJ speaker, very popular. So, of course, everyone was like, holy crap, where'd you get that? And then everyone was calling him, and he got sort of like explaining what it was literally on his website, I believe, called the Frachel. <laughs> that's what his like shelf <laughs> button is awesome. called. So, um, yeah, it's cool. It's been um, awesome well, to be able to just literally DJ off speaker without any tables or tablecloths, anything. I, I stole a hundred percent that idea, and that's what I do. I bring out that exact same thing. So, uh, props to you. And maybe that's that's something in the next five years that you're going to be product managing some of these companies and saying uh, doing some of the designs for them, and you know, telling telling them what they need to do. Just throwing it out there. So maybe later we get a, a little quote that uh, Drew and Fuse helped me get famous from uh, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things we want to talk to you about is some tech and some new technology that you're into. And uh, we're going to play this uh, segment video and then we'll talk some tech. So here we go. Hey, C3PO here. Drew and Fuse, I hear you love technology. What are some new gadgets you guys love? Oh no, R2, stop being so foolish. Let's hear about your new tech. Time to go. Master Luke needs me. All right, there's C3PO. It's the best here one yet. I love it. <laughs> He's here to bring us into our tech segment. So uh, once again, we just want to talk a little bit of tech. It could be anything, anything that just makes your life easier. It doesn't even have to be DJ related, really. But if there's any new tech that you're into, we want to hear about it. Uh, so something that had me super pumped and probably not a lot of people are going to be excited about it. So I'm probably like the most uncool DJ in the fact that I'm a Windows based virtual DJ DJ. And I know that's like the redheaded child of like dj stuff but um virtual dj just released their new stems 2.0 and they're as early access and they're going to be dropping virtual dj 2023 and man they really did themselves with this update so they were first with the live stem so i know tractor had stems and stems did before virtual dj totally aware of that but in terms of um multi-track isolation they were the first to kind of come with or like uh algorithm uh, they were like days apart so i don't know potato potato point is um to me that was like groundbreaking and they were they were good, good the new technology but it definitely needed a lot of work so then serato just dropped you know the ability to do that and then now virtual dj kind of did like a check and a mint and they dropped their version and now you know it's kind of like that that chess move that makes me really happy so whether you're virtual dj or serato i feel that competition friendly competition is a good thing because that means innovation right? and it's constantly pushing each other to come out with newer better things so like even though I prefer DJ, bravo to Serato. You know, when they when they dropped it, they did it right. They weren't first, but they did it best. You know, when they finally dropped it and then now that push tool DJ to be like, all right, can we do one a little better? And I think it's just healthy competition is just really good for the industry. So um, I'm really excited about it. I, I use stems all the time. It's like my favorite I, feature. I, I watched one of your early videos on the stems. You were showing how you could do, you would drop the acapella for sing-alongs or any of that. Um, maybe me and Fuse are Serato users, and maybe you could highlight something besides just the stems and highlight what is your use case for virtual DJ and why you find it so much more powerful than uh, Serato. And it might just be that you just used it first, right? I don't know. So I started out on PC DJ Red, which now looking back on it was the most like ugly, clunky, 
<laughs> piece of garbage. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it worked. So I'm going back to PC DJ days. I will say that virtual DJ has the edge up for me personally, because now I've kind of moved more into the private event sector. Um, I kind of, I'm really picky and choosy with club and bar work simply because I'd rather make thousands on a weekend than, you know, 300 on a weekend. You know, just private event money is just kind of, I don't know sure. where, where it's at. So, so uh, weddings and private events are kind of my, my main thing now. So anyway, um, there's a lot of features within virtual DJ that allow me to do my job as a private event DJ better um, that Serato just doesn't offer. For example, you know, um, this is kind of a well-known one, but just to kind of touch our toes in with it, um, the auto mix feature. Now, nobody's using auto mix at peak hour at a nightclub. But if I have to step away from my DJ booth to go line up my wedding party, I can't have dead air and I need auto mix to just kind of make it not noticeable that I'm not manning the booth at that time. But sometimes I need five or six minutes to go into the different room to say, hey, wedding party, you guys ready? You know, this is what you're coming in. Get them amped up, you know, do my thing. Then I can walk back to the booth and start my grand introductions. Like auto mix is invaluable to me. And I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Somebody that's really naive yeah. to it. Do you have to set up the, the grid for it to work properly? Does it just work really good on its own? What, what, any, what, if any, precepts are you doing to get it to, to function to the highest, highest level? Sure. So Automix has, or Virtual DJ has the most um, customizable, comprehensive Automixes available. You can make this as intricate or simple as you want it. Now, me personally, I use, um, so they allow you to pick your type, um, the length, and then you can set individual remix points if you wanted to. So in theory, let's just say you were playing like an EDM set. You technically could program it. It would take so much time. So that's why it's like stupid. Like no one's going to actually let auto mix DJ for them. But you could, in theory, set specific mix out points where it would flawlessly mix uh, a mix for you. I just use um, a general fade and I can pick um, remove silence. So remove like, you know, three seconds from the front and back of the track. And then my auto mix length preferred is like a four second gap. So it just makes it nice and smooth as if you were just kind of doing this um, with, with your fader. So there's no like hard abrupt stops. There's no awkward silence. There's no pauses. It just, it's nice and smooth. So um, it's great for like dinner while I'm running around prepping things or get my wedding party, you know, stage. So like it just, that's essential. And I think the other thing virtual DJ does very well is their metadata and their music organization and the way you can build, you know, virtual folders and their tagging and their filter folders, how you can make color schemes for things. Um, it just, it's tremendous the amount of flexibility that they give you. I mean, I could geek out yeah. on this for like hours and I know probably your fan base doesn't want to hear about virtual DJ. Well, but one of the things I'll say, I don't know if I've even ever said it on here or if I've told Drew this, but at the, at the bar I'm always at on Fridays, we use virtual DJ there that plays in the background when we don't have a musician playing or a DJ playing. So just on every normal day, if you're in the bar at whatever time that that's that's a software that we're running in the background we play music videos on tvs and do all that and we just run it on auto mix i used to work for a, um i used to book these bars and there was uh their video they were video based and they wanted at one point i had toyed with the idea of being able to set the cue points in, the in points and out points and programming it all to be able to do what you're saying so i might have to revisit that because um, they did have one venue that wasn't allowed to have a DJ, kind of what Fuse was saying, but you could um, send them with an iPad or whatever uh, computer. And if you were able to pre-program some of that stuff and just um, have it fly on its own, it's, it's incredible. I, I think that's a powerful feature for sure. There's one other thing that's really cool um, that I don't think a lot of people, actually there's two other things in virtual DJ that I think are super dope. So the other one is an event scheduler. So you can literally map it to start anything. So here's an example of how I use it. So a lot of my weddings have multiple areas. So reception will be one area. I'll have a remote cocktail hour area and then a ceremony in another area. So while I'm breaking down my ceremony setup and people are kind of migrating over to, you know, the patio where the cocktail hour would be, I can set up virtual DJ 
to start playing at a certain time. So I could say at one o'clock, start playing this playlist and I don't even have to be there. So now I don't have to run, you know, from the ceremony all the way over to cocktail hour to hit play to start the music. I can set it up remotely so it can just do it, you know, on, on its own. And it has a lot more ability than that, but I'm just trying to show you an example. You know, that's not available in Serato, but that makes my life easier. Is it necessary? Not, not necessarily, but as a one woman show, Anything to make my life easier, more organized, less chaotic. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to utilize that. That is a dope uh, feature. I'm going to have to wait till Serato steals it from virtual DJ. <laughs> <to use> it. <laughs> um, or it's cool for like a midnight ball drop. You know, if you want your um, Audi Sang Lang to start right at midnight, it uses internal clock. It's going to drop it like right on time. So, I mean, there's a lot of applications for it, but I'm just saying. So there's things like that. That just as a private event DJ, but as a club guy, you know, you don't give a crap about that necessarily, you know? So I think it's yeah, right yeah. tool for the right job with the right DJ, you know? Totally. And I think it's helpful. We use it at the bar, even like we, we know we have an event coming up or something. We, we schedule, we'll schedule a, play, a, a playlist to change or whatever, you know? So, yeah. Even for happy hour, for any of those things, I could see it being very powerful. Um, no, I, yeah. Serato is limited on that kind of stuff. I, I'll just say I started, I started with Serato and that's why I was asking if you found you, you did, you found, you went from PC red to virtual DJ and you know, I just had Serato first. And so now at this point, it's just what I know the most. Are you, I got to ask, are you like Warren and do you have one of these giant PC laptops that you show up with <laughs> that? Like it's got a screen like this big and it's like an 18 inch laptop. I'm like, why didn't you just bring the iMac? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. so i um i use a 15 inch uh razor laptop okay. and uh i have um a 16 inch asus but that like that's what i'm using now so one's my backup one's my main but i run off of a, a 15 inch gaming laptop i know that's cool i was just curious I, I i i'm interested because i'm literally been on apple products since i've been 17 years old and i've just never switched and it's just one of those things that i think of what you get used to and if if you are a, a you know a tech savvy person you can you can make anything work i feel like but uh i am i am definitely team apple so i'm always curious what what you know when everybody when it, somebody isn't using an apple product you know what they are exactly using as far as new tech is there anything else that you want to share with us spec wise of a pc i mean we only talk uh, mac specs so maybe you want to give pc specs on here for you know, the one or two people like, that might use that. <laughs> you mean like what I'm what I'm currently using? Yeah, like, you said you use a razor machine, and I I do know uh, like Warren. Uh, we we just tease Warren on here. Is uh, Warren's our boss at DMS, and we would like to tease him all the time. But he's hardcore with the razor, and he loves it. And I know that that razor gaming laptop is a powerful machine. So uh, maybe we could you could share that. Yeah. Um. It's um. It's been a fantastic uh, computer. And I feel like if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. You know, like technically virtual DJ will run on like a, a Walmart, you know, $200, nothing. Like it's not, then the new update is more resource heavy, but typically virtual DJ isn't a very resource intensive software. But if I'm going to buy a machine, like my laptop was like $2,500, you know, um, I usually rotate them out. I'm going to say probably like every like five, six years, what I'll do is I'll make that now the backup and then I'll buy like a like a new one and kind of just keep things fresh and and, and rotating. Um, uh, I think actually, I don't know. I'd have to pull it up. I don't even know exactly my specs. I think it's like 16 gigs RAM. It's got the GeForce GTX card. Um, I don't know. I think it's an, an i7. I don't know. I, I have to pull it up. I don't. No Are you playing I, I any video things. games on these things too? Are you a gamer? <laughs> no, no. I'm like well, you're at I the mean, event and you're back there playing like Farm Simulator and <laughs> DJing at the same time. The Sims. Um, <laughs> I mean, I play the hell out of my Nintendo Switch. Like oh, I love, okay. I love my Nintendo Switch, but I'm not like a computer gamer. No, I'm not like Doom and. Uh, I didn't know, you know maybe if that's how you got even like if that's how you got you know, onto the PC. I, uh, some people I just, there's, I'm just my, uh, dumb way of asking the question. Like why PC and not Mac? Yeah. Um, I, honestly, it just was 
in, in school, you know, when as a kid, you know, that's just what when we learned PowerPoint and Microsoft, like I just grew up as a child. My my school didn't have Macs. We just we everything was was Windows. It's just what I what I know. And then that was it. Just comfort. I like my my right click. And I get know. that completely. Yeah. <laughs> It makes sense. And so, yeah, what video pro, video editing program are you using then? Literally, my phone and yeah, Inshot. Said, oh, you, you, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Everything, I, everything no, is I on apologize. my cell phone. Dude. Oh my gosh! So wow. Okay, I apologize. I, I missed that. So like, if, it's even to the point where it's so ridiculous. Like, if I record something on OBS on my computer, I will Dropbox it so I could get it to my phone, and then export it from the, like that into Inshot on my phone. That was wow. Wild. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I, I totally missed no, that. No, it's all I, good. Here's, I guess, to circle back with the YouTube thing. Um, so I don't have a website, and I literally haven't spent $1 on advertising my entire DJ career. So every event I get is either word of mouth, referral, work from other DJs, and or um, they saw me at an event, and they're like, hey, we thought you were great. You know, we'd love to have you for X, Y, Z. So that being said, so these people found me somehow. So if I'm getting a call from a wedding, you already kind of want me. There's little to no sales because somehow you found me and you liked me enough mm -hmm. to reach out. So like my sales is like super easy um, because they already saw a gig log. They already heard a mix on Mixcloud. They already saw a social media post of the lighting and they loved it and have to have it, you know. So that's kind of why I like it um, just that way without advertising. And I just want people I almost like. And I hate using this term, but I've almost kind of put myself in like a boutique kind of DJ thing. Like I do very unique events. I get people that call me like, hey, we're getting married on an island with no power. You know, you want to do this for us? Like I don't get um, like wedding factory weddings, you know, where people are at the same venue twice a weekend, weekend after weekend. Like I get really unique event spaces. And that's also why I have the gear that I do, because it allows me to do these crazy like. I can DJ on an island with four moving heads because they're all battery powered. And like, I can make that happen for somebody because I have yeah. dope gear, you know? Um, yeah. So things that I buy and I use, I keep that in mind, like w with that, that allows me to be able to do things that other people can't. I, I just jumped into the ape labs. Uh, I have 12 now. Did you get them um, just on your own? Did they come to you and ask you to review them? You ended up loving them and using them. Just curious. No. So um, I bought every single one of those um, full transparency. I did get a couple coins for free um, because they're now integrated in the DJ booth that I use the, the max right, booth. Right. Um, so I got coins, um, for that, but I actually saw ape labs at the DJ expo. I think it was like in 2017. Yeah. I think, I think it was like 2017 and I thought they were really, really cool. And I know nothing about lighting. The fact that their music mode allows you to have that look without needing to DMX. I was sold. And the fact that they're only three pounds of light instead of 6.5 oh, yeah. pounds of light which that doesn't sound like a big deal but when you have 24 of them or 12 of something and you're trying to carry it in three pounds per light adds up to a lot of weight real quick 100 percent why i bought them is because now i have 12 and i could get just those 12 in and those two road cases it's the greatest ever i mean it was really expensive i'm not gonna lie to you uh the whole time i'm just like oh this is painful <laughs> but uh you know, they're amazing the, the, what all you're doing. premium uplighting is you know like if you look at um a, a well, car a i had a hundred like yeah i had a hundred of those and i still felt like those were cheaper just for <laughs> what, what the options were though because I, I do a lot of rentals so uh, i just bought the ape labs yourself little tip if you're down for it there's a soft case bag that's like a hundred bucks um, I would buy the soft case bag or I do have the soft case bag. So I leave the charging flight case at home because that's like an extra 25 pounds. You can literally right. carry 12 lights in on one arm in one trip. If you get the soft case, I highly wow. recommend that. Yeah. All right. Good tip. So one of the things that we wanted to ask you and we wanted to talk about, we usually call it our Serato top five, but we'll be calling it our virtual DJ top five for today. And uh, we got a segment video, and we're going to play it, and here we go. 
Hey, Taves on Day here. Drew and Fuse, the drewiest and fusiest pair on the planet, are here to marinate your ears, uh, marinate themselves, maybe kind of rotisserie themselves and, and, and you know, roll around in the ambiance of sound and music. So put on some Taves on Day light candles and let's talk music. For now, we got we got Mr. Chocolate Rain, and we want to talk some music. So I don't know how you want to go about this. Sometimes we we like to know what what people's um, you know most played songs in Serato are. And if you don't have that prepared, that's okay. We could just talk some some big songs that have been working for you as of lately, if you want to. Okay, so you know, keep in mind this is obviously coming off of uh, you know wet wedding season, so this is going to sure. kind of reflect you know that. <laughs> so. Uh, my are my starting at number one or five or counting down or what are we doing Either here? Way. Either Whatever way. makes you happy. Okay, I will start with number one and, and count down. So my number one played track here, and I think every DJ has this. It's um the I want to dance with somebody we found love peak hour mashup um by uh what is this DJ Chris Watkins? I don't even pay attention to that, but yeah, Whitney. <laughs> Rihanna, Lumity, that one. I think you guys know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Because every DJ in oh, yeah. the <laughs> mother has that. Um, oh, so this this is uh, by uh, DJ Starsky. I have a edit that uh, I drop all the time. This is a great wedding banger. It's called I Want Juicy Back. And it's uh, I Want You Back, you know, by Jackson 5. But in the middle, it drops the the juicy verse. And it's a great wow. way to kind of bridge grandma and grandpa and also, you know, the, the millennials and stuff. It's absolute fire. It's like a go-to. So I have, I'm not shocked that that's in there. I'm not familiar uh, with that yeah. one. Where did you get that one off of? What record pull? Do you, do you remember? I think this might be a Crooklyn clan. Okay. It might be a Crooklyn clan. If you want, um, I can, I can, no, I can send it your right. way. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's super love it. dope. It starts. It was yeah, all you used to read Word Up magazine, and it just it's like you know, like that the fire part, and then it gets right out of it, and it goes back to oh, baby, give me what, and it's dude, it's so good. I'd love to check um, it out. Yeah, okay. I think those kinds of surprise edits are great at like private events and weddings for the exact reason, and like you said, it bridges the gap of like new and old. Right, and it's funny the older people they don't, I don't want to say they don't notice, but like they they don't you know like they just kind of oh that's familiar and they'll bop and do their thing so yeah so that's a fire edit um and no surprising there's another one under here now full transparency i actually really hate uptown funk it, it hurts me but it's like a necessary evil so at least i found something to make it a little bit more fun and palatable i have um another edit that it's uh actually this is a dj ragoza another surprise verse edit where it's uptown funk and then it drops uh, the ice ice baby that's been oh, yeah. kind of a, a fun one, a fun one at weddings. Again, bridging, bridging the gap. And I'm really big on like that sing along thing because I'm not like big on the microphone. I, I'm not like a big hype man. So I want to do things that encourage people to bring that energy on the floor. So anytime it's like, you know, a little snippet where you get in, get out and it's just like a little sing along piece. Um, it just keeps the energy really pumped up. So I dig that at it. Yeah, uh, I have that edit. Oh, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Ragoza's yeah, edit. That's, edit. That was pretty dope. <laughs> um then we got uh Fetty Wap 679 but this is the David S Reggae remix to give it a little extra um and that's probably I, I probably because I use that to start segueing into like my reggae tone and my moomba tone like you know you kind of go from hip hop and it's a good bridge track for me so totally we, got that. we all have those <laughs> like segue tracks that we use in one genre in a way that makes sense for people that you're just not like oh well he was just playing semi-charmed kind of life, and now he's playing Peppa's. Like you're yeah. like, well, yeah. yeah, you gotta you mentally prepare how you get there. So that's that's what that track is. That's so I can start getting into my 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 Latin, or you know, like I said, Mubatone kind of stuff. Um, and then last is uh, Waka Flocka, No Hands, Acapella Out. Wow, <laughs> that's a big track. That's not that, that's. I feel like that song has only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. It's it's probably the biggest song that I play like every night, like of like just 
everybody every time it's without fail if somebody comes up to make a request anymore i feel like i can pretty much be like bad bunny or no hands like that's, yeah. that's pretty <laughs> much one of those two so what are you yeah, following so it up are... with on the acapella out of that is there like a go-to oh. mix you have or i'm just curious god um so when i mentally when i'm picking an acapella out I, I like that only because it makes it completely open-ended for me to either make a complete 180 or, um, you know, because like you, you can change the entire vibe just with the backtrack that you're dropping over that. So from there, it's like, all right, am I still going to stay in like this 60-60 beat per M BPM or am I going to drop like a transition track to try to get out of it? So there's certain tracks I as staples. I keep them as acapella out because I'm using them as like, here we're, we're, it's an energy shift you know what i mean so it really depends on who i'm djing for and, and and what's what's in front of me you know um yeah so makes sense it's awesome to uh to hear you know some of the big tracks that that have been playing you've been playing a lot and uh there are some different ones mentioned that i feel like we haven't got mentioned before so that's always good and like refreshing to hear i mean although all of them are probably dance floor crushers because obviously you play them all the time and I could see them all uh, working on the dance floor as well. Um, so it's just, but I like cool all the flips that. you used. Yeah. You had a, you had some unique versions that I don't think I've, I've heard at all. So yeah, props to you. Well, that's the six different record pools that I belong to. It, it allows me to, allows me to do that. So. Hit them with the sauce. If there's nothing else that you're thinking of, we'll we'll run the sauce and we'll we'll. All right, cool. Yeah, let's we'll go we'll go with the sauce. Let's all do right. It. So this oh. is the this is the brand new one that we this have not new. aired at all. This is uh, a DJ Rachel exclusive debut of the new sauce segment, and we're gonna play it right now. Ah, uh, the name is Bootsy, baby, and uh, this shout out goes out to Drew and Phoebe. All the way from Cincinnati to the LBC bottle. Yeah, I was told you guys are quite the chefs. And you got a delicious sauce that you cooked up. Ooh! And it drips that swagoo and breaks down the recipe. Yeah, and you giving up the pee because it's funky. As in good that is. Finger funkin' good on the one by the power of the one. Yeah, without that, there is none. So get yours and be in tune with the one that loves you. Get it, baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there we have it. Bootsy Collins breaking down the sauce. And uh, that, uh, how does he say it, Drew? The recipe. <laughs> the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> so the sauce is our, 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 our ending segment that we'd like to do. And we would just love to hear a takeaway or something that you would love to share with the guests uh, for them to hear. So actually, you know, here, this is, and I don't want this to come out to be like another tell them why you're mad thing, but um, you know, just, I noticed that there's this kind of movement in, in the community where, there's some people that kind of bully people into thinking that they shouldn't do certain things or certain things aren't cool or don't do this and, you know, don't play line dances, don't do this, don't do that. And like kind of shaming people for doing certain things. And at the end of the day, you need to stay true to your style, your vibe, the music you enjoy, the clients you have and stop DJing for other DJs. Like you have to do what works for you and your market and your skill set and just don't be discouraged to do things you want to do just because somebody else is saying it's uncool or they don't they don't do it that way um there's a lot of noise out there and you just kind of have to like stand your ground um and just be authentic to you it's really easy to get kind of whisked away in this like you know egocentric um you know bully banter and just like i don't know don't, I'm just not down with that. So be be true to who you are and do what makes you happy for the people that love what you do. No, that's I love great. that. I think that's, 
Yeah, it's, it's very important for people to hear sometimes, you know, especially younger or newer DJs that might get discouraged from seeing something. I think, you know, as you become a, a veteran in the DJ game and you see somebody post this or post that, things you should be playing, things you shouldn't be playing, blah, 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 blah. It's like you kind of know that like, oh, that he's they're saying that for this reason or that. And I'm just going to stay in my lane and and do me. I think that's a, a great you know what you said is a great piece of advice. And I want to say also, you didn't mention this, but just getting out there and doing it. The fact that you just took uh, your cell phone and you started recording these uh, these video logs and you were able to find success in it is just another testament that I would, I'd add to it from personal reason to give up to say about you is uh, just getting out there and doing it. I think it's really impressive and it's very, it's very cool that you were just out there and you did it and you, you just do you. And I love that about you. So it's cool. Now expand upon that a little bit. Um, do it because it it's rewarding to you not to get anything else out of it. You know, if you don't enjoy it, don't force it. And like all this content I made, I made it without expecting anything in return. Like if you go in wanting stuff to get sponsored or immediately picked up by this or free that, like that's such a turnoff to brands and companies. Like if you give, you're going to get, um, but you, you have to just be again, genuine and, and do it for the right reasons. Um, not to instantly go viral or like I said, to pick up a sponsorship or something like if you're in it for that selfishness, um, it's going to come through in the content and people are really turned off by that. So, um, you know, do things without expecting things in return and good things will happen. You know, if I showed you the metrics on my cell phone of how many hours I'm on my phone, um, I don't think anybody <laughs> would believe me. It's, it's, it's gross. Um, it's like a full time. Gee, hold on. Can you, can you see this? Oh yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> 14 hours a day. Oh, and you have a full-time job. I don't even know how you're able to pull that <laughs> off. Do um, you sleep? It's not, I don't. <laughs> and a lot of that is content creation. Um, it's m responding to people, messages, emails, you know, recording things, uh, doing research, you know, while I'm, you know, trying to make a video or something. So like, I really do give 110 my 10% of myself to not only, you know, what I do for my clients, but this industry where I can people who reach out, you know, I get message at 3am, hey, you know, because different time zones, you know, my computers doing this or my I can't get virtual DJ to do that. Like, I'm pretty much like a personal like IT person for a lot of people. Um, I don't know. So I just I give I give a lot. And I think there's something to be said for just kindness and uh being accessible and giving to the community and then good good things happen with that so i completely agree and we had uh stylist chris on and that was one of his big things that he wanted to take away for people to take away too is you know the more you give the more you're gonna get and i i completely completely agree with that and you know the people that are most um you know, what's the word I'm looking like selfless, the ones that are truly out there trying to help people and or too, you know, the ones that are trying to come to you to learn too, because there's a lot of people that come with intention to try to get shit from you too. And it's like, nah, you want people that are there to hang, to learn because they want to be there because they like the environment and all that, not just to, I'm here now, uh, you, you said on your podcast that I needed to show up to get gigs, but now I'm here. So give me the gigs, you know, like that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, it's that selflessness that you really need to come in with and it shows through too. Like you said, I've had a couple Absolutely. people actually show up to our gigs. I, I put them to work. <laughs> I was like, Oh, you, you're here. Here we go. You're going to roadie for me now. That was your bad. Yeah. But the, up. those, those people that have showed up, showed up with not looking for the gig. And then they ended up with the gig too. It's a hundred percent true. Um, no, they, they're hard workers. I, I tend to, uh, be more of, what do we call it? What's that boot camp? I call it boot camp. So if you're going to make it through one or two gigs, then it's then you get the the blessing and I'll start paying you and doing other stuff. So no, 
great, great recommendations. I would even go as far as to say our podcast was never supposed to be serious, and that's why we goof off so much. And, you know, like even the little segment videos were really just because we didn't know what to talk about. And they ended up being some of the things that people liked the most. So, like, we're just being ourselves. We're just having fun, just being idiots. So, you know. Absolutely. They're the highlight of the show, to be honest. They're amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Well, that's that's encouraging to uh, keep, um, what should I say, getting these amazing uh, people to do these live for us, like Michael Jackson, the <laughs> real Michael Jackson, doing that. For hey, us. that's the real Bootsy Collins, though. That is the real Bootsy Collins. That is the real Bootsy. Yeah, that is the real Bootsy. You know, Michael. Some might argue he's not the real Michael, but Drew and I definitely know it is. But of course, um, of course, <laughs> he's uh, he's in uh, the Dominican somewhere performing at an all-inclusive <laughs> resort tonight, too. If you want to go see it. <laughs> So, uh, well, well, Rachel, you've been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for being on. Truly an honor. We we love all the work you're doing. If you guys aren't watching her videos, make sure you go check out her videos. Um, if you can plug plug away all your socials and all the videos where people can find you. Sure. So, um, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Facebook. I don't Twitter. Never did. It's not a big Twitterer. Um, even on Twitch, everything is literally at DJ Rachel Lynch, big, fluffy, blonde hair. That's me. And that's it. So I would love to have, you know, some people kind of join, join my community. You know, it's, there's just a lot of great people, a lot of great dialogue there and whatever I can do to, to help out, you know, um, my personal emails on all my channels, um, my Google voice number. So you can text me. I won't give out my real one because there's been a lot of creepy things that come in from time to time. But um, I'm probably one of the most accessible people in the entire world, hence the 14 hour screen time. So if you need something and you need help, let me know. Well, that's well, awesome. You are- and, yeah. Thank yep. you so much for, for coming on and, and, and being here with us today. So if you guys are listening, make sure you go subscribe to her YouTube channel and follow her on Instagram and all that good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. This was absolutely tremendous and an honor to be here. And uh, I'll see, um, see you Sunday. One, one more, one more time. I just want to say thank you to Rachel for coming on. And I want to say thank you to all the listeners that have been uh, sharing and, and tagging us in posts and comments and all that. We really, truly appreciate it. If you want to leave us a voicemail, you can do that once again on our YOLO line. It's 562-246-YOLO. Make sure you use that Drew Infused promo code for 30% off your first month on DMS. Make sure you use the promo code DAFS at Briggs Beard Company. That'll get you 20% off your order. Also, you know, make sure you, you hit up Club Cannon, get that, get that CO2 Cannon, Take your party to an 11. And uh, once again, if you are listening to the podcast on iTunes, make sure you rate, review, subscribe. It really does help grow the show. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you're watching. And that's it. Until next time, we will see you guys later. Daft Punks, peace out. Peace.